Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Canada's Movie and TV Hosers. I'm one of your hosts, Gregory Barrett. Normally my wife is here, but Christine is still away visiting her family. If her travel plans go well, then hopefully she will be back here for the next episode that will be recorded on Sunday. Um, as I'm recording this on Friday, I'm trying to stick to the schedule. Not really feeling the greatest today, but going to try and get through this show. And I got Fluffy Kitty here to keep me company, being a good kitty. Apparently she's watching the, the curtains in the background there and the different shadows. She was very good last time. What you guys didn't see was the 15 minutes before this episode where I was trying to get her settled. And I recorded a five minute video before the last episode that she was on. And uh, yeah, she's just kind of all in my face, all over my computer and, uh, you know, rubbing up against the camera and just generally not wanting to be sailed. But after that, she was very good and hopefully she'll be really good today. Good kitty. So if anyone's watching this, thank you very much. Uh, this show's not getting a lot of views and I'm not really doing it for views. I'm just kind of trying to build it up and I'm just doing this mostly for fun. So getting into today's show we, we're not really doing much news anymore because Christine didn't want to however there was some big news this week and that was everyone's probably heard about this by now is that Jeremy Renner who plays Hawkeye in the Marvel Cinematic Universe uh, some people's favorite uh, Avenger I know there's definitely lots of people out there from the comics who really love that character well, unfortunately, Jeremy Renner was in a serious accident this week. I think it was on New Year's Day. Don't quote me on that. But he, uh, this is all over the news, by the way. He was involved in a snowplow accident, and apparently he got run over. He went out to help someone during this terrible storm in Las Vegas. And he went out to help someone, and they, uh, yeah, he got run over by a snowplow, and he's been in ICU ever since. He's in critical condition. Apparently, he's stable, but still in critical condition and in the ICU. So, oh, man, I, I was heartbroken when I heard that. I hope he's doing okay, and I hope he gets better. I mean, he's an Avenger. I've been thinking for a while that I should go back and rewatch the Hawkeye series on Disney+, Plus, and now I want to go watch it even more. Um... I'll just have to find the time for that. However, I wish him and uh, his family all the best and I hope he makes a full recovery because, yeah, I want to see him back as Hawkeye in more stuff. I know he's getting a bit older now, but uh, anyway, check out, uh, you can check out your feed on social media for the latest updates. I checked on Twitter before this show and the, the latest update was that he was still in the ICU in critical condition, but stable. Um, he had a spa day yesterday. His family was there and uh, washing his hair for him. I don't have that problem, unfortunately. Anyway, wish him all the best. Uh, you might notice that I've been trying out some different things with the lighting and different camera shots there. I have a hard time lighting myself, probably because I'm so, so pasty white and, uh, and bald, too. So I'm getting some new professional lights and hopefully I'll be able to set that up here in my small studio and see how that goes. So trying to make improvements all the time. It's, a lot of it just comes down to cost and I just don't have the money to invest more. Otherwise I would buy microphones for both Christine and myself and get better sound and some professional lighting. So just trying to make little changes all the time. So that's it for the news. Now there was a couple of trailers I want to go over that came out this week. There was, first I saw there's a Red Band trailer for Evil Dead Rise. Uh, check that out on YouTube. That came out a few days ago. It looks really creepy and really scary actually. I mean Evil Dead has, that franchise has been around for a long time and the original movies weren't made on a big budget. This looks like it has definitely more of a budget. And I saw the Red Band trailer, and it looked pretty terrifying. There's some creepy stuff with the mom. And, I mean, basic premise of the trailer is the evil dead have shown up and is taking over the mom, and she's going to kill her whole family. And it looks pretty scary and terrifying, actually. Also quite, uh, might be a lot gory. Everyone's covered in blood a lot. And if this is an R-rated movie, 
which I'm not sure if it is, but I can check that out. Are the original Evil Dead rated R? I don't know. Anyway, the trailer looked amazing, but uh, what do you guys think of this? Let me know down in the comments below. So, Evil Dead Rise, which says it's a 2022 movie? I think they need to update that on Rotten Tomatoes. Who's making this? Warner Brothers Pictures. So, I don't know if that's Blumhouse, because I usually they work with uh, Universal. Still, looks really creepy. Are you guys going to check this out, this movie, when it comes out? Which, I'm not sure the release date yet, but leave a comment down below and let me know. Also, this is not stuff that I think Christine is looking forward to at all, so... She'd probably rather not talk about horror movies. Now, there was another uh, trailer I checked out. I believe it's called Reinhardt. Let me double check that. And looks pretty creepy, actually. Why can't I find this? Mm -hmm -hmm. Nope, wrong one here. Anyway, so Reinhardt is coming out with Nicholas Holt and Nicolas Cage and apparently it looks like it's a a comedy for the most part the trailer starts off with Nicholas Holt going into a support group meeting for people who have are in toxic relationships or have terrible bosses and he's kind of playing it straight maybe he's the straight man in this movie however and then you got uh, you got Nicolas Cage in there, so that's his boss as Dracula. But Nicholas Holt isn't just a regular person; he's one of Dracula's familiars, and so he's eating a bug and getting superpowers apparently, or supernatural powers in the trailer. Um, I'm not a huge Nicolas Cage fan, although this does look wacky and fun. Reminds me of from last year we got that Studio 666 movie with the Foo Fighters. I thought that was going to be really fun and just a wacky horror movie, which was kind of a disappointment. It, the jokes didn't really work that much for me. It needed more comedy in it. But this Reinhardt movie, it looks pretty good, and I might check it out. So, what is that? I.E. Reinhardt. Nope. Well... Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below for Reinhardt. And I think that's it for the trailers that I have today. What else do I have? I didn't think I had watched much uh, much TV this past week. But going through it, I've been getting looking through a, a lot of stuff that I might have watched. So Because I went out to go see Megan. I uh, watched the new episode of Willow, and that's an hour. We'll get into that. I watched the two-episode premiere of The Bad Batch. And that's only an hour max with the two episodes. And I had to watch 13... Well, I didn't have to, but I watched 13 hours of The Handmaid's Tale to get through season three. Now, the subsequent seasons are only 10 episodes each, so four and five, I believe, are only 10. So it'll be less, but it's... Uh, that's some. Uh, that's a lot of dark television and a lot of adult themes we've been dealing with there in that show. So that was 13 hours of grim television watching. Also, I checked out the new first episode for Kaleidoscope. And oh, and then when I had time, I was watching, I watched four episodes of The Big Bang Theory. No, five episodes. So I'm going to talk about all that stuff. I'm going to start off with Megan. Now, if you've seen the trailer, this is... It's a creepy AI doll, and some people were calling it a Chucky ripoff, or um, also, you know, it's got a lot of parallels to the Terminator franchise, and also it's got a lot of references to Annabelle because dolls are creepy. So I went and saw this last night on Thursday preview night, and I posted an out of the out of the theater spoiler free review. This movie was pretty good. It uh, didn't blow me away. Nothing I found in it was overly creepy. There was a couple of jump scare parts, so I'm going to make this a spoiler-free review. I'm not going to give away stuff. The poster, um, it just makes the doll look really creepy, and that's something that I found lacking. I mentioned in my review was that 
no one really addresses how creepy this doll looks. And it's just kind of, maybe it's Uncanny Valley for me. But no one really addresses it in the movie. There's a couple of people that are startled when they see it. But then immediately they're fine with it. Meanwhile, every time this Megan doll is on screen, I'm looking at it. And I'm like, it just doesn't look right to me. It just looks really creepy and unsettling. So I, I don't see why a child would play with this or why anyone would want this. I mean, yeah, I know it's a, it's a robot. But I don't know. It just looks unsettling. So, now, as I was mentioning earlier, there's a lot of references to other show, to other movies and franchises dealing with the horror movies. So, yeah, it's definitely got Terminator vibes. It's got Chucky vibes. It's also got, um, what else did I compare it to? I don't know. I mean, in terms of Possessed Doll, it's not just a Chucky ripoff, I would have to say. But... My problem with this movie, is why I didn't give it a better rating, is that a lot of the things it does is referencing all these other films, but in all those other films, they kind of did, did the same concept, but better. And what I suspect is that, I, I don't know anything, I'm just some nobody who's posting videos on YouTube. I don't know anything about the entertainment industry or anyone in the entertainment industry, but I suspect they toned this down on purpose. This is rated PG-13 in the U.S. and here in Canada it's rated 14A, which means you have if you're 14 or over, you can go see it by yourself or with your friends. You don't have to have a parent, but if you're under 14, you have to have an adult accompany you in the theater to watch it. I think they toned this down on purpose. Because this could have been way more violent and way more scary and creepy. So I think they toned it down to get more of the teenager market. And this might make a lot of money because this movie is only, the budget is only $12 million. And according to Box Office Mojo, I checked before the show, it could make over $10 million this weekend. Who knows, it might hit $20 million. I have no idea. And if even if it hits, say, around $10 million, on a $12 million budget, that's on its way to making some good money because then this movie could have legs and it could stay in theaters for the next month or so. And when you add in overseas markets, yeah, $12 million, roughly $24 million, maybe $25 million with marketing, that could make a lot of money. So, who knows? However, this, well, it was all right. It's not something I'm ever going to watch again. So, by just being okay, once again, means that it's bland and forgettable and it's not worth even remembering for me. I'm not a huge horror movie guy or thriller kind of person. If they're really good, I'll enjoy them, like Get Out or there's some other ones I really like, The Shining, uh... Might be a bit controversial. I always liked Event Horizon that came out in the 90s with Sam Neill. But this one, I'm going to have to give it, uh, on the internet rating system of best movie, worst movie ever, I'm going to have to give it a worst movie ever because I'm not going to go back and watch this. If they had gone more for an R rating, I think they could have been more like, uh, what was that other scary movie from the Conjuring series? Annabelle Creation with the doll. Yeah, I think it could have been a lot, a lot... I think they toned it down a lot, and it could have been a lot more terrifying. So, eh, that's my review on it. Have you guys checked out Megan? Are you going to? Are you a big fan of, of horror movies and scary movies? Let me know down in the comments below. If Christine is back next episode, i got a bunch of comments saved up, and I'm going to be reading them with her because I don't want to just be reading them my, by myself. I've been replying to them or liking them. But if people are saying stuff, we're going to read it out on the show. And if you want to send in a comment, go right ahead and we'll read it out on the show. I want that to be a, a regular thing if people are commenting. What's next after Megan? Oh, oh geez. Willow. <laughs> so it's my weekly update. If Christine is back tomorrow, she's going to get caught up on episodes 6 and 7 that she missed. And if she's here, we'll talk about this episode again more. If not, we'll just talk about it next weekend because, you know, she's traveling. And if 
her travel plans don't work out so well or if it just takes too long and she's tired i mean i'm not gonna make her do an episode because there's no need for that and plus i got fluffy here to keep me company good kitty good kitty okay so willow okay spoilers for willow i probably already spoiled it in my uh reaction video that i posted on youtube this this episode's all over the place as with is the whole show they were getting out of the the cave with all the trolls at, at the end of season six and then kit fell into the water in this crystal crystal lake it's it's really weird it's like they're walking across crystal but underneath it's all water or some kind of liquid i don't know if it's water and it's kind of fragile it's like ice and the the cave started to collapse and there's rumbling and stuff falling out so it's making holes in the crystal or ice whatever it is and what happened was kit fell in at the end of the last episode so that's where this episode picks up and they're still trying to get out of the cave but they got across this crystal lake and what happens is kit almost accidentally finds her brother by falling into this magic goo because her brother we see him a lot at the beginning he's still trapped in this magical realm where he's in this destroyed city but he can't leave he can leave but he'll just keep coming right back so he's dealing with this woman that he met and they're drinking this orange goo all episode because that's all they have to drink when there's this door they're supposed to go in but he keeps saying no we shouldn't go in there that that's bad that's that's the wrong way that's bad and so when the doors close this liquid comes out and fills up the pool and they drink it it's weird um so the rest of the crew they get out of the cave troll oh uh, sorry the the cave with all the trolls in it and then they have to cross the shatter sea which is apparently for them only like two inches deep because they start to cross it and Graydon's making some weird jokes and they're kind of having like some weird banter but none of it really matters so as soon as they start crossing it they go into they find this weird like hobo merchant shack and so they go in there and they're stocking up on stuff and they eventually the demons that have been chasing them from a few episodes ago but you barely remember them they find them there so they have to get out and they've killed the the old guy that was there so they steal his like fish stagecoach and they're driving this across the the shattered sea but there's this creature that keeps coming out that's apparently their horse that's in the water and it's this giant it's like this weird like green giant tadpole with these giant red bug eyes looks really weird and Graydon wants to be friends with it it's kind of all over the place meanwhile so they keep going and they're just going for weeks or months or who knows how long they can't keep track of the days they're just traveling forever trying to cross this shattered sea and eventually Graydon lets the fish the fish horse the seahorse lets it go and they they have to walk meanwhile they're fighting with each other and some think they should go back but this whole time they're crossing they have this big montage because it's training uh the laura is training with willow a lot with the magic so they spent a lot of money on visual effects in this episode i guess this is where all the uh the money for the show went and then you got kit training with jade and then suddenly graydon busts in and he's got magic as well so he's training with alara and he's still kind of desperately obsessed with her all the time he seems to act really desperate like he's like come on come on be my girlfriend all the time or he's just always wanting to want attention from her and i don't know it's just kind of weird so they, they walk and then because they have to apparently the magic they have to walk across the shattered sea they get to the end of it and by walking and then there's just you know that's the edge of the world the world's flat and then the water just falls off 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 into an, an endless abyss 
All right, okay, it's a magical world. I guess you could get that. So Kit and Alara hug and then fall off together, and they end up in this magical realm where her brother Eric is. All right? And that's pretty much where it ends. Oh, and there's some other stuff that was happening with Eric and this woman that he'd meet there, but I'm not going to spoil that if you're uh, if you're watching this show. Is anyone watching this show or is it just me? Because even Christine's tapped out because she's been away. Hopefully she'll get caught up and then we'll talk about it more on the next episode. So there's only one episode left, I believe, because it's only eight episodes. So, well, I've made it this far watching this terrible show. I mean, I understand it's for kids, but uh, it's bad. It's not good at all. Now, I don't remember the original. I do remember seeing it, but I haven't seen it in, I don't know, probably at least 20 years. So I'm not planning on going back to watch it anytime soon. I do remember enjoying it. Maybe it's really bad and this is the same thing. But I don't remember it having the kind of plot holes that this thing, that this show does. Oh, well. Uh, let me know what you guys think of Willow. Is anyone watching this or am I the only one? Uh, and if you are watching it, is it working for you or not? Why or why not? Let us know down in the comments below. So that's my Willow review. Okay, let's go into some, let's bring it back up here. So I also checked out The Bad Batch, which premiered on Wednesday on Disney+. Plus. I posted an, out of, an initial reaction view, a video short, so you can check that out. But I want to talk about it a little bit more. It's two episodes, and they're not like the first season where they had this really long, like, hour and 20 minute short movie as the first episode. Which was great, by the way. If you haven't checked out The Bad Batch before or any of the Star Wars animation, you could just jump right in here. If you're interested in learning about Star Wars, you could just jump right in here. And it's really fun because it immediately jumps right into the action, which we see in the trailer. Um, am I going to spoil this? I don't think I'm going to spoil this. There'll be a couple of things. It would be on the cast list because Rhea Perlman is back in this. Uh, if you remember, or if you don't know who Rhea Perlman is, go back and watch classic 80s television show called Cheers. She played Carla, the, the sassy waitress. That's Rhea Perlman, which she was great in. I mean, it's Cheers. Everyone was amazing in it. Although some were better than others, but I'm not, I'm not here to review Cheers. Most people wouldn't even remember Cheers. I'm dating myself. So anyway, Rhea Perlman's in it, but also in the first episode we get Wanda Sykes is in it. So that's amazing. Good on Wanda Sykes for getting in a Star Wars property. I know it's voice acting, but yeah, I want Wanda Sykes to be in Star Wars. And if she was in a live action movie or show, I'd be all for that. Um, so if you watch the trailer for season two of The Bad Batch, it jumps right into the right into the action and adventure. Like, even with you don't even know the characters' names. And then there's a minor pause where they kind of take a breath and they kind of talk to the characters and it kind of reintroduces them for, for, for anyone checking it out new. And then it just jumps right back into the action. And then that's the first episode. And then the second episode is a lot more of the same. It's just, it's a really fun universe. None of these characters have appeared in any of the... The movies or anything these are completely uh, animated created characters as far as I know there isn't any reference to the any of the Bad Batch or Omega and I'm not gonna spoil who she is but she's one of the main characters there isn't any reference to the to her in any of the Star Wars lore but my, maybe there is something from Legends I don't know if you know let me know down in the comments below. I'm trying to learn more about Star Wars lore. That's why I started reading some of the new books. Um, yeah, it's just a great show, and it's super fun. You don't have to know anything. You don't even have to see any of Star Wars, really. If if you're one of those people that you've never seen any of the Star Wars movies, you could just jump in and start watching this, even with Season 2. And it's super fun. And then if you want to learn more, you just go back and watch season one. And then if you want to learn more, there's tons of stuff to do. Tons, tons of stuff to watch. You could start watching the movies based on 
chronological order, starting with the original Star Wars from 1977. Then you just go from, in chronological order, what comes out. Even if you skip the animation and go back to it later on, or you can continue with the animation, and after watching season one and two of The Bad Batch, you could just then go and watch Clone Wars or Rebels. Although if you're starting with the Clone, if you're starting the animated Star Wars, The Clone Wars, don't watch the first two seasons, because eh, you're not missing anything, and that's really only for the hardcore Star Wars people, but even they admit it, it ain't good. It's just kind of villain of the week. Maybe we'll talk about that more another time. So Star Wars The Bad Batch, uh, first season I loved it. I would definitely give that a best TV series ever. This one is already off to a great start. Both two, I really enjoyed both episodes that premiered. It's probably going to be another 10 episode series. Don't quote me on that though. Um, at this point I'm definitely in for it. And if it, uh, you know, whether it's 10 episodes or more, I, I, I'm definitely in for it right now. It would have to go on a, on a really, go off a really big cliff very soon for me to not want to continue watching this because it's just super fun. And I love the timeline of it. This, the Bad Batch takes place, so it's after, right after the Clone Wars show, which leads into this, this show. It's, so it's a spinoff of the Clone Wars. It's right after episode three, because the series in season one starts with Order 66. Okay, that's a spoiler for last season. Sorry about that. And so if you know Order 66 from Star Wars Revenge of the Sith, which is episode three, it's right after that. So this is at the beginning of the Empire, right after the High Republic has fallen and the Empire and the Sith have taken over got to sound like complete nonsense to anyone who knows nothing about Star Wars. Um, so that is a really interesting time period that I enjoy because all the other stuff is kind of all in the same time period. I want to see stuff more that's, yeah, around the time of the fall of the High Republic, but also more stuff of the High Republic. I just find that era fascinating. Anyway, what do you guys think? Uh, are you watching the Bad Batch Season 2? Are you a fan of the Star Wars anime stuff? Are you a fan of Star Wars at all? Or if you are never seen any of it and you're going to check out Season 2 on my recommendation, report back, let me know what you think. And if you are watching it, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Hopefully next episode we're going to be reading all those comments. What do I have after the Bad Batch? Okay, so that was fun, but we've got to bring it down and be more serious. I've also been continuing to watch... The Handmaid's Tale, which is a Hulu show. Now, it's not an HBO show, but I keep thinking that it is because HBO has always been the gold standard when it comes to television series and limited series. I mean, they've just always been known for coming up with really great stuff. I mean, even going back to the 90s with The Sopranos, or was that the 2000s, and... What else they got? I mean, Game of Thrones is from there. House of the Dragon that they recently did. Anyway, I keep thinking it's an HBO show, but it's not. It's a Hulu show, which we don't get here in Canada. I'm watching it on Crave, which is how we get access to Warner Bros. and HBO content. So that's why I keep thinking it's HBO. But it's not. So I enjoyed the first season where June, okay, obviously she's a handmaid. The first season is all about her learning to survive in this dystopian world, which all takes place, which is filmed in Toronto, although I think she's mostly in Boston. And then some of the show is actually in Toronto, which is really interesting because I'm because every time I see something I recognize, I'm like, yep, that's the Toronto airport. And they're actually at the Toronto airport in the show. They're supposed to be. And even this season, I saw the CN Tower in one of the Toronto shots because they're supposed to be in Toronto. So the first season about is about June learning to survive in this dystopian world where there's been a second U.S. civil war. And what they don't tell you in the first season that you find out in the third season is it's still ongoing. So America is at war with this new nation called Gilead. But the way they present it to you, they start off the first season, it's really small, and it starts off, she wants to, she's going to survive this, what, that's what she says. 
And so the whole first season is she's alone and she's learning to survive, meet other characters, and then by the end there she start she she's learning that there is a resistance. And then it the season one ends with a big act of resistance. And then season two I thought season two was going to be about her learning to escape because at the end of the second episode, she escapes and she's pregnant because so she doesn't want to have her baby there. So, but actually the second season is about her having her baby, trying to escape this world, trying to get her daughter to have a better life because she escapes at the end of the first episode, season two, but then she gets captured at the end of episode Sorry, episode one at episode three. So she wasn't getting away for very long. And then the rest of the, the next ten episodes of season two is all about her stuck back in Gilead. But I think the main theme of season two is that she's trying to get her, her new daughter, who she's going to have, which she does have in the second season, she's trying to get her out of this. And spoilers, I mean, these are all spoilers because this show, this season's from a couple years ago. Uh, if you don't want to hear it, you can always jump to uh, the next the next section. I put all the time codes in the description below if you want to jump around to different sections. Um, so she does get her baby out at the end of season two, but she chooses to stay because she wants to continue to fight Gilead and she wants to get more people out. And so season three is about her learning to become a resistance fighter because she gets an, end up being paired up with this new Commander Lawrence, played by Bradley Whitford, who's in Get Out, and he's amazing in that, and he's amazing in this as well. He was the dad in Get Out. Um, yeah, the, if you see him, you'll know. Uh, he has a distinctive like white hair and white beard. Looks great with a beard. Like I don't think I could rock a beard as good as that guy. So now she's living with Commander Whitford, uh, Commander Lawrence, who's played by Bradley Whitford, and he's kind of running the underground, the new Underground Railroad, because he's trying to get people out uh, into Canada. But he's also a big part of creating Gilead, apparently. They don't say specifically, but maybe he came up with a lot of the lore and the rituals and the ceremonies, all these bizarre and, frankly, kind of grotesque ceremonies that they have. Um, so he's trying, so he's helping people get out because his previous handmaid, he helped her get out in season two. That was Emily. And that's how she got out with June's baby. So now in this season, she's, be, she's paired up with him and they're running this underground resistance, but she's trying to, she's thinking bigger. She's like, no, I don't want to just get one handmaid out at a time. She wants to get out. A lot of people, whether it be the handmaids or the maids, which are called Marthas, but also she wants to get children out because she doesn't want any of the children, whether they be girls or boys, she doesn't want any of them growing up in Gilead. So that's her big plan, and it all leads up to this at the end of season at the end of season three, that they want to get all these kids out and they want to get them to Canada, which I love how Canada is like the same paradise where just because you know. We don't have the, the terrible rhetoric in, in our politics that, uh, that Americans sometimes have. And I mean, I'm not saying Canadians are better than Americans. I'm not saying that at all. And I'm not saying that Americans are better either. I just, you know, I'm a fan of the U.S. But uh, sometimes the rhetoric gets dialed up a lot there, way too high. And so Canada in this world is just, you know, as, as always the stereotype, you know, Toronto, Toronto the good, Toronto the plain, Toronto the boring, which is a stereotype for it. And that you just come there and it's like, yep, everyone goes to work, goes home, their families, yeah, that's about it, you know. I mean, they, they make it seem like this utopia, but, you know, there's still crime in Canada and there's still, unfortunately, a lot of violence, but... You know, they make it seem kind of unrealistic, I think, that it's this utopian society when in reality it isn't. Um, it is a nice city, though. I enjoy it. Hmm. So, 
now she's she's become a resistance fighter and there's all this stuff back and forth about she's doing this and then she's not doing this and then there's some really interesting stuff in season three and i seem to be enjoying this show more as it goes whereas when i looked on rotten tomatoes the critic score said that the first season was the highest then second season then third season then down to the fourth season and i think it picked up again in the fifth season but so it seems to be up to season four diminishing returns but for me i'm finding that each season that goes by while it is a really dark show that can be quite heavy to watch maybe i've gotten too used to it now but i find it gets better each season you know it reminds me of if you ever saw the netflix Mar marvel punisher series obviously on netflix i saw the first season of it and it was really dark and depressing and it kind of it, it's similar to that in the sense that this movie deals with a lot of dark and depressing themes you're like oh i'm gonna be depressed for the next couple hours while i'm watching this but it's terrifying and it's so fascinating um, so don't spoil anything for me because I am going to be watch. I'm definitely going to continue and watch season four. Hopefully get that done for next weekend. So for next Friday show. And, and if, unless that completely drops off a cliff and just becomes terrible, I'm probably going to finish watching it to season five and then see where I'm at to see if I want to watch the final season six that they announced is coming out. But I don't know when that is. Season five came out in September, so... Maybe it comes out then, maybe later, who knows. I don't know. I haven't looked up a release date yet, but I haven't heard anything either. So, still really enjoying The Handmaid's Tale. Although sometimes I'm sitting there and I watch, I end up watching three, three episodes and it's just three hours of being depressed. You're like, oh, jeez. That's why then I turn and I go and watch something more fun, like, uh, the Bad Batch, or I watch Willow and I'm laughing at it. But definitely for Handmaid's Tale Season 3, best season ever, although I give all of them best season ever. Uh, if you're watching it, uh, if you're going to check it out, let me know down in the comments below. Read that out on the next show. Then I watched Kaleidoscope, because this is supposed to be a fun, wacky heist series. And it's on Netflix. So I checked out the first episode. And this show apparently has a different concept where you can watch all the episodes. It's a limited series, I think. And you can watch all the episodes in different order. So I watched the green episode, but apparently other people got a different episode first. And so you can watch it. In a, it's an interesting concept where you can watch it in different order and get different pieces of the puzzle, but you have to watch the whole thing in order to get the whole story, which I've never seen that done before. And that is quite interesting. I would watch something like that. However, I watched this first episode and it wasn't very good. Uh, I, I don't think I have anything I could spoil from it because I don't remember a lot. It had some pretty bad dialogue and there was some bad production values it just didn't seem very it looked very cheap however there was a scene no it did open with this kind of a montage of sneaking um sim cards into prison which it went through the whole process step by step in really fast kind of like uh like you were watching a a, a quick clip in an Edgar Wright movie where it's just like close the car door uh, seat belt turn the engine on and then engine roars go it, it was kind of like that where it's just one two three four five and you just got to quickly pay attention that was fun the other thing I enjoyed from it was Jai Courtney's in it and I haven't seen him in much these days because he was in he was in those Suicide Squad movies but his character in this show is great and how he acts is like he's just a complete kind of loser dirtbag you know thug level criminal but probably a drug dealer and i felt that how he was acting in this that would have been we should have seen way more of that in the suicide squad when he was playing you know the ridiculous character captain boomerang but it's dc it's a superhero universe but anyway, how he was acting in this, that was great. 
and he wasn't in it very much, but I did enjoy that. However, the rest of the show was not very good, and I can't see myself watching another, I don't even know how many episodes, seven or eight episodes of this to finish this limited series. I was like, I was looking forward to it, because it's got Giancarlo Esposito, who uh, is Gus Fring from Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul, and it's got Jai Courtney in it. It had some other people in it, too. But just Giancarlo Esposito, and I'm like, yeah, he, he's great as Gus Fring, and he's also in Star Wars and The Mandalorian playing Grand Moff, Grand Moff Gideon, I want to say. I don't know, I'll have to look that up afterwards. But he's great in that as well. So, But this show seemed to be kind of just hit with a thud. It's just, eh, didn't impress me at all with season one. However... Are you going to check out Kaleidoscope on Netflix? Let me don't know down in the comments below. What do we have next here? Okay, the last thing I've been watching, uh, just to try to give myself, you know, some more of a, a good time, because I've been watching a lot of The Handmaid's Tale, which, as I mentioned, is so dark and depressing. Then when I have time, I'm watching... The Big Bang Theory. So I've started re-watching that, and I'm still on season one. I think the first season is like 18 or 19 episodes, so it's going to take a while to get through. It's just because I'm watching all this other stuff, even though it feels like I'm not getting that much, getting that much stuff to go through. So what happened? I watched episodes five, five through nine, I believe. So let me just check out my tweets here, because that's where I post all my reviews, and it reminds me of what I've watched. So what do we got here? Episode 7, 6, where's episode 5? I think I watched that probably on Monday or Tuesday, because I just, I just haven't had time since then. I was watching all the, uh, the Handmaid's Tale. Where is it? Episode 5, there we go. This is where they bring in Darlene from Roseanne for the first time. I can't remember the actress's name. But, once again, if you remember an old show from the 90s this time, Roseanne, with Roseanne Barr, and then they brought it back more recently as the Connors. Um, so Darlene, they brought her back, and she's another scientist that works at the university with Leonard. And they finally brought her back, and they have, I think they have a date. Yeah, and that leads to funny situations with Sheldon, uh, with having a, another person in the apartment because he doesn't like anything to change and he's so set in his ways. And Anyway, so that was a pretty funny episode. Then I think there was one with a Halloween episode. Penny host, uh, hosts her first Halloween party. And nope. Yep, yep, that's it. And so she invites the guys over, so all four of them go over, but even though these guys are like 30 years old, none of them can talk to women, they have terrible social skills, unless they're with other nerds. Eh, that one had some funny laughs, and I found it just more awkward, because I'm like, guys, guys, just get up and go talk to them, and stop, you know, stop acting like such losers, you know, don't talk about the Doppler effect, because no one wants to hear about that, that's boring! Unless you're talking to another scientist, but you know what? Uh, I have a science background in education, and... <laughs> oh, good stretch there, Fluffy. Sorry, everyone. She's just putting her... She's just mooning everyone there. What was I saying? Oh, yeah, I was saying that they were just too awkward and talking about such nerdy and too much science stuff and I just felt it cringy and I was just like guys just try to be normal anyway so that episode was all right then I watched episode seven which is where oh the Halloween episode the one who ends up being the ladies man at the end is Raj which completely out of left field because he can't talk to women then in episode seven Penny has one of her friends from Nebraska or not really her friend, just kind of showed up to use her and so that she could crash in her apartment like a bum. And so, and apparently she's known in Nebraska, her friend is, for being quite a whore. 
So what happens? Wallowitz immediately goes over to talk to her. <laughs> so this is just an episode where uh, Wallowitz is being used by this girl. And in the end, we get our first appearance of Mrs. Wallowitz, of his mom. And, of course, we never see her in the show, but she's always just off camera, just in the next room. But you always hear her, right? I can't remember the name of the actress who played her, but she was amazing. Unfortunately, she died a few years back, I believe, while they were making the show, which, that's heartbreaking. I'm going to look this up on Rotten Tomatoes. Big Bang Theory. Do, do, do. Big Bang Theory, 2007. Man, that's old. Okay, let's see if I can find it on here. Where's the cast? Yeah, because it, it doesn't even have the other people in it. Where is she? Oh, she's not on here. Of course, I have to go to IMDb and look it up. So, I'm really enjoying watching it and going back to it. But, yeah, it's a long time ago. It makes me feel real old. I'm sure there's people to that might watch this video that have never even seen an episode of it, which wouldn't surprise me at all. Carol Ann Susie is Debbie Wallowitz. Is that her? It's gotta be. Debbie Wallowitz. 40 episodes. Yeah, uh, okay. So, yeah, episode seven. That was a fun time, yeah. Wallowitz gets rid of, rid of this girl who's leeching off of him, but he just brings him home to his mom. And then the, the two women just yell at each other. And he's while they're yelling at each other, he's just like, guys come over and knock on his door. And he's like, yeah, let's go. And he just leaves them. And I'm sure, he, I'm sure his mom just threw, her, threw that girl out. Then I watched episode 8, classic episode where Raj discovers he can talk to women when he's drinking. So, <laughs> yeah, because Penny is... Pa practicing her bartending and Raj gets drunk so then he can talk to women but only if he's drinking because before then he just he can't say anything he's just um so of course he gets way too drunk he gets set up on a date with uh, from his parents so we see Raj's parents from India for the first time on webcam and he gets set up on a date, but he doesn't want to go because it's, you know, it's one of those arranged marriages thing. And he's a complete jerk because he's drunk off his ass. And, yeah, it, it leads to a lot of hilarity. And then Sheldon is really hilarious at the end because of, uh, he pissed off Penny. So watch that for some good laughs. And then the last one I watched, I believe yesterday, Leonard and Sheldon are fighting over a paper. And Leonard wants to go present the paper, but Sheldon says no, and he forbids it. And Leonard's like, yeah, I don't care. My name's on the paper, too. I'll go present it. And he has to, he wears his corduroy suit, which they don't make anymore. And that's why he kept it, because they don't make them anymore. So he, why you would want a corduroy suit, I have no idea. Um, yeah, it's pretty funny. Yeah, it leads to a big nerd fight. And which ends up getting put on YouTube and everyone likes it because it's hilarious, which, of course, Wallowitz recorded and then put on YouTube. So, yeah, that's another good episode. I'm looking forward to uh, watching all of this, but it's 12 seasons. I know there's 11 seasons available here on Crave, so if they don't put up the 12th season, I'll have to I'll have to rent it or something. But, uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to getting through it. But it's going to take a long time. So this is going to be a weekly, if not every episode, update. I'll just be like, I watched these episodes from the Bang, Big Bang Theory. And even though I haven't finished watching the show, I'm already pre preemptively giving it a best se series ever. Because I just love this show so much. It's so much fun to watch. Um, what do you guys think on the Big Bang Theory or anything that I talked about this time? Or even on Fluffy here? Let us know down in the comments below. We'll read those out next episode. And you can always, if you enjoyed this, you can like our video. Thank you very much for watching. Yep, good kitty. And so you can subscribe to our channel for more content. I also post, or try to post two of these episodes a week. And then anytime I can, I post a short initial reaction 
uh, to watching a movie or a new TV show, and then there's out of the theater spoiler free reactions that I post anytime I go see something new in the theater. Um, so let me know what you think. I will also post all the social media uh, in the description below. You can email Canada Movie TV Hosers at gmail.com or you can follow the show on Twitter at St. John's. Uh, no, that's my Twitter is at St. John's Critic. The show's Twitter account is at Canada Hosers. Take care, everyone.